This is the largest living structure on the planet, the Great Barrier Reef. It's so large, you can see it from space. It comprises about 3,000 individual reefs and stretches about 2,300 kilometres down the east coast of Australia's Queensland state. In terms of area, it covers about the size of Japan or Malaysia. Globally, hundreds of millions of people benefit from coral reefs. Without reefs, fish and other seafood will become much scarcer. Fishing communities would suffer and jobs will be lost. Yet that's the very future which many reefs around the world face. Two severe marine heat waves in 2016 and 2017 damaged the Great Barrier Reef, bleaching large patches of coral. About 50% of shallow water corals died. Climate change, stoked by burning fossil fuels, is to blame, say scientists. To investigate what's happening to the reef and to see what the future holds, the Straits Times has come to Queensland to see the situation firsthand. We begin here in Cairns, a major centre of the reef's tourism industry. We speak to coral scientists, tour operators, tourists and conservationists to get a handle on what's happening to the reef and the impacts on local livelihoods. Bleaching is caused by a sudden spike in sea temperatures. The corals turn a ghostly white. If the heat lasts more than a few weeks, the corals can die. World-renowned coral scientist Professor Terry Hughes has extensively studied bleaching events at the Great Barrier Reef. So what we're seeing globally is more and more of these bleaching events with a shorter and shorter gap between pairs of recurrent bleachings and that gap is really critical to allow time for the corals to recover. And it's the next bleaching episode that local tour operators are deeply worried about. Look, if it gets worse, it is certainly going to have a, uh, a negative impact on our industry in the short term. We'll still be OK, um, but it's the short term is where the challenge is. At the moment, there are still large sections of the reef that are in good condition for tour operators to take tourists to see. But more intense bleaching episodes could damage the reef further. What we have to look at is how little damage can we prevent? So, uh, you know, and, and look, the window of opportunity from my point of view is probably about that five year mark. Two operators are becoming Down more vocal about protecting the reef and educating visitors about global warming. Coral reefs are fascinating, they're amazing places. And to go, uh, you know, you do, you go into a different world, you go diving or snorkeling on a reef and that's healthy and it is absolutely magnificent. If you go and see that and you see a beautiful bit of reef and you see a sick bit of reef, it can't help but think, oh, you know, this is something that, you know, something needs to be done about this. And then you think, well, because of human actions, the reef could disappear within my children's lifetime. Mm. It would be an absolute tragedy. So what does the future look like if mankind doesn't get climate change under control? Dr. David Wackenfeld from the organisation which manages the reef paints a very stark picture. So progressively what will happen is we will get more severe weather events, more severe cyclones, heat waves, floods. Progressively these will damage our reefs more. Reefs will lose their coral. Coral will become increasingly rare. It will be increasingly difficult to find. The fish communities, the other communities will change. This will affect people. Tourism industries will cease to function, fishing industries will cease to function, people will lose their jobs, they'll lose their food source. This is what we can expect to happen. For Australia, that means making deep cuts to greenhouse gas emissions and supporting green energy. The government is also under increasing pressure to scrap a giant coal mine planned for Queensland. If the mine, backed by Indian energy giant Adani, goes ahead, the coal will be shipped through the reef via a coal terminal called Abbott Point. Conservationists say the government can't be both protector and destroyer of the reef. It has to make a hard choice. Billions of dollars in royalties, or save the reef for future generations. It doesn't matter where we burn the coal, it affects the Great Barrier Reef, so people across the world can take action to protect the reef by pushing for the policies in their own countries. As Australians, we need to show climate leadership here. Great Barrier Reef is on our doorstep, we need to protect it. For Dr David Wackenfeld, it's clear what needs to be done. 
it is essential that we do everything we can to protect coral reefs locally from pollution, from overfishing. But the biggest problem and the most urgent thing we have to do is mitigate climate change. But it's not all doom and gloom for the reef. There's still time to cut emissions, and scientists are working on ways to give the reef a natural boost to cope with a warmer world.